and my distinguished colleagues. Thank you for this privilege to meet those who manage our central bank. I want to differ very radically from what seems to be the general view. My view is I am suspicious of people whose main background come from commercial banking. Because central banking is about policy. It's not about marketing. It's not about seeking profit. It's about getting monetary policies right with clear focus on specific microeconomic objectives. Whether it is job creation, stabilizing a, a, a price regime, exchange rate regime, inflation regime, all of that. When listening to the CVs, people who are managed banks that have gone into liquidation, that cannot be used as positive in their favor. The truth has to be told. I am not suggesting that any one of them is responsible. I am saying a doctor who parades the number of people who died under his care <laughs> cannot forward that to me as a CV for me to appoint him as a soldier general. I don't need them to take note of that. That what we do in our small places of work, whether they, succeed, they survive or fail, goes to our credit or discredit. So they should take note. However, sir, I think at the heart of our problem, and I need the abuse on this, is that the immediate past management of the bank emphasized their autonomy. But in the real world of macroeconomic management, every agency's activity rub off on another agency. There can be no autonomy from monetary authorities such that they do not interface with the fiscal authority. And even these two, in my view, if they do not relate with the Ministry of Trade and Commerce. Because the challenge we deal with now is at least to everybody here, everybody seems to have submit, submitted completely to the so-called market forces and rely on the invisible hands of uh, Adam Smith to regulate and determine the value of the Naira. It is now clear, after Babagida started this evaluation, that the Naira, the market forces can never stabilize the Naira. The state must intervene. Interest rate cannot be at 20%, 25%, and you are expecting the manufacturing sector to grow that require long-term investment, or uh, investment that require long-term gestation period, borrowing at 20%, even if you are a drug dealer. You will find that those dealing with drugs in, uh, in some other part of Latin America will be more competitive. So I think that there is need for a complete thinking outside the box. When the West celebrates our free market, no control, and so on, I'm always suspicious. When they come for us, that we are doing the right thing, the, the state is withdrawing, less regulations at a time when we can see that even at the turn of world trade, nation states are negotiating with other nation states to have specific trade relationships. So I feel we need this new team. We need this new team to completely think outside the box. And I will expect on this occasion, Mr. President, that all the things that many of our colleagues have spoken to, including my, my dear brother, uh, Oje Karu, if we allow Nigeria to import everything without restriction, and you have limited Naira dollars available, the Naira will continue to suffer devaluation. Our best time that you refer to, Mr. President, when you reminded us of a time where one Naira was 1.5 US dollars. I was a very proud worker in the textile factory. In those days, government ordered the, uh, a policy of backward integration, prohibit manufacturers from importing certain items. Even some textile fabrics were prohibited because the game of competition presupposes equality and a, a level playing field. You cannot ask a, a, a featherweight champion to go and engage a heavyweight champion in the name of competition. Nigeria needs specific tools to protect industries at home 
and not pretend that a man with one leg can compete in a race with a man with two legs. We need a complete radical shift. We don't need the West to clap for us. We need Nigeria to clap for us. So I want these bankers, and also I've heard of you very much. When I was in trading, you know, we trouble each other so far when you were in Lagos. And if now we trouble you so that this president succeed. We need to keep interrogating our assumptions and ensure that we are not copy-copy Washington, all this international finance capital. It is their interest. There is no such thing as common interest. So, Mr. President, I thank you for allowing me to talk this much because if this president is going to deliver on the renewed hope, it must devise new tools away from invisible market to visible hands that can be held responsible and accountable for our collective future. Thank you, sir.